In this video, I'll show you how to design and build your own Arduino-controlled robotic arm. This video is going to have two parts. First, we're going to talk about the physical construction of the arm, and next, we're going to talk about the circuit and code you will use to control the arm. So first, let's take a look at the arm and talk about the physical construction. You can see this is a relatively simple arm made from popsicle sticks, double-sided foam tape, and these little blue servo motors, which are very common for hobby and Arduino projects. Now, we have a separate video in our introduction to Arduino series that introduces you to these servo motors, so if you haven't watched that yet, it's linked in the video description. We recommend watching that before you move on to building a robotic arm with multiple motors. Each one of these servo motors has a single axis of rotation. You can combine them to make joints for your robotic arm. We can see that this arm has three motors, two at the base and one out here at the end. The two at the base allow for independent horizontal and vertical rotation, and then the one at the end controls the gripper. Each one of these independent motions is called a degree of freedom, so we would call this a three degree of freedom robotic arm. However, you will notice that only three degrees of freedom actually doesn't give you a great range of motion. The gripper can only move in an arc, and there is no wrist joint, so the gripper cannot rotate. I've just built this as an example to show you how to get a basic arm going with a few servos, and you can choose if you want to add additional degrees of freedom. Something to consider there is that as you add more motors, make your arm longer, and add more joints, it will get heavier, so you might need to use some more heavy-duty construction. You can see that this one is already starting to sag a bit because the double-sided foam tape isn't really enough to support the weight of the arm. So again, I've built this as a quick and simple demonstration, but if you want a more robust robotic arm, you're going to need to use sturdier construction materials. You can also look into building a cable-driven arm. This is something we have several examples of on Science Buddies and other projects on our website, which again, you can find linked in the video description. This is a mechanism where you can have joints or fingers for a gripper out at the end of an arm, but they are driven by strings or cables that go through the arm. So here I pull on this string at the back, and that makes the fingers out at the front bend. You could do something similar with a robotic arm with servo motors, where, for example, the servo for the gripper could also be mounted at the base of the arm, but when it rotates, it would pull on a string that would make the gripper move. Another thing to consider here is cable management. As you add more motors, again, especially if they are farther out at joints on the arm, you're going to have more and more cables to deal with, and you don't want your arm to get snagged or have a limited range of motion because it's pulling the cables too tight. So zip ties or cable ties can be a great way to help keep those organized and, again, help prevent them from interfering with the arm's motion. And finally, regarding the physical construction of the arm, you could really do an entire separate project just about gripper design. So you can see I have made a very simple gripper here just with these two paddles made from the ends of a popsicle stick, but that's not a very high friction surface. It doesn't always do a great job lifting things, and again, this is pretty, a pretty lightweight arm, so I just have it picking up these little pom-poms, but it probably wouldn't be able to lift up heavier objects. So you could even test different grippers or make interchangeable grippers and see how they do picking up different objects. But if you want your main project to really be about design and control of the arm, you might just want to stick with a single gripper design and use that. But again, you could really experiment with different grippers, adding different shapes, different surfaces with more friction, and see what type of objects they can pick up. Next, let's talk about the circuit and the control interface you are going to use to operate your arm. There are many different sensors you can use with an Arduino. Sensors take some data or information from the environment that then allows the Arduino to do some sort of calculation with that data and then use it to control something. So in this case, I have two different sensors that I am using to control my arm. One of them is a joystick, just like you would find on a video game controller. That controls the up and down motion of the arm. And then I have a switch that is simply on-off that makes the gripper open and close. But there are plenty of other sensors you could use to control the arm. For example, you could use buttons, which you push and release. So these have similar functionality to the switch, except they don't stay in place. When you let go of the button, it will pop back up. Whereas when I toggle the switch, it will stay in place until I toggle it again. You could also use a potentiometer, which is a single knob that you can turn. 
This joystick actually has two potentiometers inside it. That is how I get two different motions out of this single joystick. And there are many other sensors you could use with an Arduino. So in this video, we're going to focus on the button and the potentiometer as examples. We're going to switch over to the computer and show you some example code you can use to control servos with those. And then we also have a separate video about using a joystick with an Arduino, which again, you can find linked in the description of this video. Let's switch over to the computer, and I am going to use Tinkercad, which is an online Arduino simulator, to demonstrate control of a single servo motor using two buttons. You can see I am running the simulation here, and when I hold this button down, it makes the servo rotate counterclockwise, and when I hold this button down, it makes the servo rotate clockwise. So first we will talk about the wiring for the circuit, and then we'll take a look at the code. As for the circuit, the connections for the servo motor are pretty simple. Servo motors have three wires, one for power, one for ground, and one for the control signal from the Arduino. The only thing you have to be careful about is the color coding. This can vary between different manufacturers, so you will have to check the datasheet or the instructions that came with your servo. In this case, the orange wire is the signal, the red wire is power, and the brown wire is ground. So the ground wire needs to be connected to ground on the Arduino, I have that going to the ground bus here, which is then wired to ground on the Arduino. This is a good point to note that if you don't know how a breadboard works, we also have a separate video that introduces you to a breadboard and how all of these holes are connected. We then have the power wire, which goes to five volts from the Arduino, which again is connected to the bus here. And then finally the signal wire, which I have chosen pin 10. You can actually use any of the pins on the Arduino. So if you have a project with other pins, you can pick which one you want to use for the signal wire to control your servo. For the buttons, and we also do have a separate video introducing these buttons if you would like to watch that in full if you haven't used these buttons before, but if you have, you just have these straddling the middle gap of the breadboard. I have one side of each button going to one of the Arduino's pins and the other side going to ground. I do not have an external pull up or pull down resistor because I'm going to use the internal pull up resistor in code, which I'll show you in a second. Now let's open up the code and take a look at this line by line. I'm going to include the Arduino servo library, which makes it very easy to control servos and actually lets you to control up to 12 servos on the Arduino Uno. And then I'm going to declare constants for the pins for my servo and buttons. And note that I am using a numbering and naming convention here that would make it easy to expand to more servos in the future. So I have servo one, which is controlled by buttons 1A and 1B. If I added servo two, it would be controlled by buttons 2A and 2B and so on. I then declare a few variables for my button states, the angle of my servo motor and the delay time I'm going to add to slow the servo down a bit. Then you have to create something called a servo object, which is what you're going to use to control the servo in your code. And again, I'm using a naming convention that would make it easy to add more servos in the future. Now that we are done with all of that, we get into our setup function. I'm going to set my two button pins as inputs with the pull-up resistor enabled. This just saves you from needing an external pull-up resistor. And then with the servo library, you use this attach command to tell it which pin you want to use for which servo. So I'm going to use servo one pin, which I have to find as 10 up here with servo number one. I've also initialized serial communication, which is useful for debugging and for example, printing out the angle that your servo should be rotating to. However, note that serial communication is slow. So if you do this on a physical Arduino and then comment out all of your serial print commands, you might see your servo start moving faster. So you'll have to adjust your delay later once you've removed the serial commands and you're done debugging. Inside the loop function, I use the digital read command to read both button pins. And then I have two if statements to check if the buttons are pressed. Now. I have pull internal pull up resistors enabled on these buttons. So by default, when the button is not pushed, the voltage will be high. And then when I push the button, it's connected to ground. So the voltage will be low. So I am checking if the button state is low, which means the button is pushed. So if button one a is pushed, I'm going to increase the angle. And remember that actually made the servo rotate counterclockwise. So I'm going to set the servo angle equal to servo angle plus one. If button 1B is pushed, then I'm going to subtract one from the servo angle. 
After those if statements, we're not quite ready to set the servo angle yet. We need to make sure it hasn't gone out of range. For example, if I just held button 1A down for a really long time, eventually this angle would be more than 180 degrees. So I'm going to use the min and max commands, which are Arduino functions to set and make sure this angle stays between zero and 180. So what this does is it says set servo one angle to the minimum or whichever is the smaller of these two numbers. So if servo one angle is already less than 180, it will just stay the same, it won't change. But for example, if servo one angle becomes 181, then the min function will set servo angle to 180 because that is the smaller of those two numbers. Then after that, it will do the same thing with the max command. If servo one angle is greater than zero, then it will just keep its existing value. But if servo one angle becomes negative because I held the button down for too long, then this command will set it to zero. So that is ensuring that our servo angle stays between zero and 180. Once I'm done checking that, then I am ready to use the right command to send that angle to the servo. So if I open up the serial monitor and run the simulation here, you can see that it is starting out at the angle 90, which I set earlier in my code. But then as I hold this top button down, that angle will increase until it gets to 180. If I keep holding that button down, it will not go over 180. I can hold the other button down. It will go all the way down to zero, but it will not go below zero because of these min and max commands. Next, we will switch over and talk about how we could do this with a potentiometer instead of buttons. Here I have replaced my two buttons with a single potentiometer. Potentiometers have three pins. The outer two pins get connected to power and ground, and then the middle pin gets connected to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. I just have a few changes to the code. I only need to declare a single pin for the potentiometer and a single variable for the potentiometer reading. I do not need to use the pin mode command for the analog inputs, so that is gone from the setup function. And then in the loop function, I use the analog read function to read the value from the potentiometer. This will return a value between zero and 1023 using the Arduino's analog to digital converter. However, we need to convert that to a value between zero and 180 for the servo motor. This is where the Arduino's map function comes in very handy. It takes a variable, in this case, my potentiometer reading, you give it the input range, which is zero to 1023, and the desired output range, which is zero to 180. So it will convert a number in this range to the corresponding number in this range. And since you are already giving it the minimum and maximum values, you don't need those separate min and max commands to make sure it doesn't get too high or too low. So I have deleted those, and then we just write the angle to the servo motor like we did before. So now I can just turn the potentiometer and the servo motor will follow along. You'll notice that depending on how fast you turn the potentiometer and what you have your delay set to, the servo motor might lag behind. Again, this will be different on a physical Arduino, which will typically run faster than Tinkercad, and if you have serial print commands in your loop, which add more time. Now that you know how to control a single servo motor with an Arduino, it's up to you to design your own robotic arm by deciding how many degrees of freedom you need, how you're going to construct the arm, and what sensors you want to use. Remember that there are many additional resources linked in the video description that can help you along the way, including written instructions on our website that include example code and a circuit diagram to help get you started. For thousands of other fun hands-on science and engineering projects matched to your interests, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.com dot org.